Welcome to Memphis, everyone. This is the 2005 Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. I'm Sean Royster, alongside Aaron Katz, former pro. I mean, racquetball, really, the most exciting sport you could get. I mean, players diving all over the place. The ball's going 200 miles an hour. And this tournament, the biggest of all time, players, fans everywhere, and it has been an incredible tournament up to this point. Two five-game tiebreakers in the quarterfinals to get to this. Yeah, and today's match should be very exciting. A real test for Rocky Carson. Rocky has had a very difficult route to the semifinals. Was down 2-0 against Javier Marino in the round of 16. Came back to win in five games. And yesterday, last week we saw against Jason Menino a very, very tough five-game match that he did a great job pulling out after being down 9-7 in the fifth came back and won 11-9, a real tribute to Rocky's improved mental toughness. Rocky Carson playing the best racquetball of his life, ready to propel himself into the finals of this U.S. Open. Let's hear from him now and see what he has to say about this matchup against Kane. He's played well against me in the past. He's uh, number one player in the world. And uh, partially, I feel like because of me, I haven't been able to get those wins when I need them. And definitely uh, my last victory against uh, Jason's giving me a little bit more confidence. Jason, you know, he's been playing about as good a ball as anybody has been in the last few months. And for me to be able to pull off an upset or in, in some ways just a win, for me, it was just, it was big. So confidence-wise, it feels good. I needed, a, I needed a big win and I was able to pull through with it. Um, I definitely am gonna have my hands full today. I went from uh, a slower paced game of uh, Jason Nino to now I got a, a, a drive serving, uh, for the most part pounding the ball, uh, you know, style of game with Kane Waz Flinchuk, and I'm gonna have to adjust to that. At the same time, I'm gonna try to get him to adjust to my game. Hopefully I can get him playing more of my game than me playing his. So Rocky definitely knows what he's gonna deal with today. He is playing Kane, he's played Kane, and he's taken a beating from Kane in, in previous years. So, you know, he's as ready as he could be. He says the five game tiebreaker that he was in before this match prepared him and gave him a little bit more court time. Yeah, and I heard him say that, Sean. I'm not convinced he believes that. I think from Rocky's perspective, he'd want to be as fresh as possible. That being said, he's been through two tough five-game matches. He's mentally prepared, and he's going to be going in there today ready to fight Kane, but I think understanding it's going to be an uphill struggle. Well, Kane, known as the Terrell Owens of racquetball, very confident, signed the court last year. Some would say cocky. Let's hear from him now and see uh, if he's ready for this match against Rocky. Last year it seemed like we met in the semifinals every tournament. Um, you know, great player. Watched him play uh, yesterday against Jay. Uh, unbelievable match. He's playing the best racquetball that I've, that I've seen him play um, in a long, long time. Uh, but it's going to be fun. Uh, you know, playing Rocky is always, always a lot of fun. We always have a real good match. I feel great. I feel great. Uh, you know, um, Nothing against the players that I played in the early rounds, but I feel like my tournament starts right now. Um, this is going to be my biggest test of the tournament so far. I may have lost a step, but it's a, it's a, it's a step that those guys never had. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to come out and uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to do my thing. Like I said, some people call that cocky. I think it's hilarious. I think it's great for the game. He's saying that he lost a step, but it's a step that they didn't have. The other players? Well, it, it might be cocky, but it might be true, They're too. very well could be true. After watching what Kane has done with the competition the last couple of years, you can't fault him for being a little bit cocky. He's really dominated this tour, dominated Rocky, Kane, and Cliff, the three remaining competitors, so I can certainly see where his confidence comes from. So Kane hasn't lost a game, not a match, but not a game in this yeah. tournament for two years, and he's the first one who would win this tournament three years in a row. Unbelievable stuff. This will be a great match. Rocky Carson, Kane Wazalinchuk, when we get back. The Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships is brought to you by Choice Hotels International, family of hotel brands with over 5,000 locations in eight different brands worldwide, offering every type of accommodation in every price range. We meet all your travel needs. For reservations, visit us at choicehotels.com today. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. And by Wilson Art Flooring. If it's tough enough for pro racquetball, it's tough enough for your home. Enjoy the beauty and durability of Wilson Art Flooring. Available at fine floor covering centers everywhere. Nikon, the world leader in digital imaging, precision optics, and photo imaging technology. 
Visit NikonUSA.com for a complete listing of all of our state-of-the-art products. Nikon, at the heart of the image. Also, Nuveen Investments, dedicated to helping you reach your goals in life. Ask your financial advisor today how Nuveen's growing range of equity and fixed income products can help you support your long-term plans. It was almost 50 years ago when Danny Thomas had a dream. A dream of creating a unique research hospital devoted to curing catastrophic diseases in children. More than just a treatment facility, this would be a research center for children from all parts of the world. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital has always played a big part in the sport of racquetball. Every year since the U.S. Open began here in Memphis, the players take time out to go over and visit these children. The Choice Hotel's U.S. Open Racquetball Championships has donated now over $100,000 to St. Jude's. This helps in advancing the research and treatment for these brave children. Not only is this great for the kids to meet these professional athletes, but it's also a reminder to the players and all of us truly what real strength and courage is all about. You guys ready for some racquetball? Yeah. All right. Zero, zero. I love it, I Kane like Wazalinchuk. So let's make lots of noise. Firing up the crowd already. Look at him talking to him. Ask the That's crowd if they're got? ready for some racquetball. I'm ready for some racquetball, Aaron Katz. It should be a great match. Uh, certainly history is going against Rocky here. Kane killed him in the same position last year in the semifinals. Lifetime record, 1-11. in 11. So clearly Kane is the heavy favorite here. Look at that. That is Rocky Carson setting the precedent for how this match is going to go. No? <laughs> it's just kind of a little too early to maybe make that call. Great shot by Rocky, and he'll take anything he can get. You know, last year he looked a little bit like a deer in the headlights. I think this year he'll probably play a little more mature and be a little more prepared now. He has worked his way through two very difficult matches. Came back from 2-0 against Javier Marino in the round of 16, and then beat a very tough Jason Menino uh, in the set, in the quarterfinals last week. Oh, it goes out for you, but not for me, eh? Woo. That's the smartest shot I had. <laughs> Both players having a lot of fun out there so far. You know, it's tough to, to be mean to a guy like Rocky Carson. I mean, he's just such a nice guy. And they both have mutual respect for each other. Yeah, but... but like you, you and I have talked before, I'm not ready to see a tea party. Yeah, this I is... I want to see a battle. I think they'll have no problem not being nice to each other out there, Sean. And off the court, I'm sure they get along fine, but they understand once they close that door behind them, it's warfare. That's a great get. An amazing recall by Rocky Carson. Yeah, and Kane left his up just a little, but Rocky still had a dive all out to get to it, and to re-kill it was a phenomenal shot. No points scored yet, game one. This is the semifinals. One serving zero. Good start for Rocky. You now, if Rocky wants to take some comfort in historical records, he was 6-14 and 14 against Jason and came up with a big five-game win. So maybe he can also block aside his 1-11 record against Kane. Wow. Rocky anticipated that. Wow. Wow, that came up first. Good shot, though. Kane getting a little props, just he shocked that he was even it. there wow. and almost got his racket on that. You know, Kane looks, although he's down 0-1, certainly looks supremely confident these last couple of years here at the U.S. Open. Really believes that he owns this court in this tournament. I will say this. Kane has made more errors and had look, has looked more human in the first three or points of this game than in the three matches I saw him play here last year. 
I don't think I saw him make a mistake in three matches, and he's already made a couple here. There's a mistake by Rocky Carson. Yeah, you know, and a mistake by Kane, too. Rocky cannot afford to miss that shot because Kane missed his backhand, really gave Rocky kind of a forehand setup. We've consistently seen people having trouble with that ball on this right glass wall, Shane. Sean. Whatever my name is. You can call me whatever, Aaron. That's a good get. Lucky crack there on the right side wall, but yeah, nevertheless, good it. effort by Rocky. One serving zero. And Rocky off to a good start, hanging in there, working his way into the match. Rocky really has evolved into a mature player. You know, you've you've observed in the past how maturity has played a factor in Rocky's game. And now it's playing a factor in a positive way. He's, he's really a lot smarter. He comes in here with a game plan, a serve pattern. And you know, he puts himself in, in a much better situation to win matches. Yeah, and, and Kane um, has looked very pedestrian so far, not the Kane that we're accustomed to seeing. That's vintage Kane stuff, though. He likes to try to shock you with uh, something quick. Little quick hands, little uh, silly shot though. Silly. That's tough. It's a great shot. Zero serving three. Good start for Rocky here. Kane hasn't been able to get anything going just yet. Came out a little more relaxed. Um, Joking with the crowd. Last year, he was all business, looked much more focused. Let's see if he's going to get there now. Great shot by Rocky, cutting off that Z-serve. 3-0. 3-0. Kane yet to score a point. This is uh, pretty interesting. Good effort. A great angle by Kane. And that's really an element of Kane's game that you don't hear people yeah, talk a lot about. But not only does he have the spectacular ability, the great diving and re-killing ability that everybody's aware of, that's a good example of how well he uses the whole court, moving the ball around with angles, cross courts, down the lines. His versatility is really what separates him from the rest of the pack. That's a great shot by Rocky. I, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. He didn't hit it real cleanly, but I thought it was good. And the other thing, Rocky is really such an honest player. I think if it had skipped, Rocky would have called it on nah, himself. He's not. A, I don't know about all. I don't know about that. Aaron. You don't know about that. Uh, I'm giving yeah. him too much props. A little too much. Yeah. You know, I've shot to Rocky's credit, he is an honest guy. But as I was giving him props for being a nice guy, I think you made a great point in correcting me and saying when that door is shut, it's all left behind. And I think, you know, if a call is made, he knows he's going to get burned because Kane's going to take it. He's not as, he's not a Ruben Gonzalez where Ruben, the legend Ruben, is known for giving up calls and, you know, in this tournament gave up a game point. call that, man. When the call was made his way, I don't see Rocky doing that. Yeah, you know what? Uh, having played Ruben many times, Sean, Rocky now getting applause from the crowd because he just gave up a call. Isn't that ironic that it occurred just as we were having this conversation? I stand corrected. I mean, what? I've got nothing to say there. All right, we'll change it up then. And there you hear the crowd clapping because they feel there's some justice in that Rocky won the serve back after giving up the call. Great observation, Aaron Katz. Hello. 
That's the rocket. Yeah, that's the first rocket he's Last hit. And Kane still, he, he doesn't have that eye of the tiger just yet. I'm confident he'll get it. But last year, you know, from point one of every match, you know, there was just absolute rage. Nice get. Great get by Kane. Great rally by both players. Yeah, you know, Rocky looks very calm, very relaxed. Kane is certainly a little off his game right now. You know, last year, everything that touched his racket was just rolling out. Um, right now, he's just looking like another really good IRT pro, whereas last year, he was clearly in a different league from all of these players. Uh, about a six inch square right there. Yeah, that, that's a mistake there by Rocky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, these players have to adjust their lob serves when they're hitting it into the side wall on this portable court. As we've talked about in prior weeks, Sean, the back of the left wall and the right wall are cut off for TV and because it's a portable court. And if you hit the ball out, you lose the rally. If it hits the floor and then goes out, it's a play over, but we'll see some things on this court that we wouldn't see on any other court. Kane serving a drive Z. Between the legs, full swing. Unbelievable. Great, That's great stuff. Yeah, you know, and he went for that shot. He took the ball between his legs and hit that angle as precisely as he was going for between the legs. There's you know, another cross-court missile. As we heard in Rocky's interview, one thing he he does for strategies, he likes to try to slow games, slow games down, and he has the ability to hit some junk. And he said in the interview he wanted to try to match up with Kane and bring it a little bit more aggressive and try to play a game just like Kane's against him, which... You know, I actually I think that's a good game plan. I think Kane, you have to be so precise with your lobsters that it's almost not worth it. You're better off just going in there and playing sh smash, smash mouth racquetball and trying to bang it out with them and see if you can put a little pressure on them. But to go out there and play lob serves is a very, very difficult challenge. Good serve. Oh, no. yeah. You gonna take my word for it? No, I saw it. Oh, okay. Two serving three. Kane Jarn with the referee, likes to talk, he's talked to the crowd, he's talked to Rocky, he's talking to Jason Thorner, the referee. But generally in a, in a pretty good-natured way. It really takes a lot to get Kane to get too angry. There's a good shot there from Rocky. Kane left that serve up a little bit, and with Kane, you really got to concentrate on your first offensive shot, because if you leave it up just at all, his re-killing ability is so good that you really get punished for any mistake at all on, on the offense. There's a lob serve. Jams him. Good get. Oh, wow. Four, seven, two. You just don't see Kane do that very often. No, I mean, this first six points of this game are as... Uh, play hard, bend your knees. As bad as six points as I've seen Kane play. Rocky sticking with the lob serve. And another miss from Kane Wazalincha. Boy. A very unkane like beginning, not only from an execution or lack of execution, but from an intensity standpoint. He doesn't have anywhere near the intensity I've become accustomed to seeing with him. Good, Good get. get. Oh, wow. Kane slipping. Yeah, sloppy Catch. rally. Wow, it really was, but Kane, what I was impressed with there, Kane lost his footing and was quick enough to get set and take a full swing. It was beautiful. 
sloppy rally still, un, uncane like. And Rocky, you know, although he's up 5 2 and to his credit has hung in there, um, he is not playing particularly well yet. Nah, that's not good. Good get. That's a great, great get. Great anticipation. Another great get by Kane. Awesome. Just great court positioning by, by Kane there. You saw him set Rocky up in the middle, rotate around to Rocky's backhand side to position himself to chase down that pinch and was able to stay in the rally and came back winning it when Rocky missed the setup. Kane with a lob serve. I, I thought he was there. I thought he took a, took a shot at it. Yeah, I think it was a good no call. Um, I'm not sure uh, what Rocky was asking for. It looked like he went for it. I didn't see him raise his hand to indicate he wanted a hinder. I think he missed it. He went for it, missed it, and, and just because he was so close to Kane, he was kind of searching for a call. Well, I was saying, it wasn't by me. Out of reach? 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 Rocky pleading his case, but to no avail. I did. Good job, sir. Missed it by half a minute. It's not a strong case. Four, five. Set up for Rocky. Wow. It was a great pass. And I thought it would just be a, a get situation for Kane, but he still got a racket on it to where he took a full swing from his oh, knees. Oh, yeah. And, and really, you have to hit a great shot to not have Kane taken a swing at the ball. Really takes a, a very aggressive shot to put Kane on the defense. Set up off the back wall. That's beautiful. He did, he did so much of that in his quarterfinal match, Aaron. Yeah, his backhand splat when he has a chance to set up is very, very effective. You know, and his lob serve, he's hit very, very well. You saw Kane miss a ceiling ball there. Kane doesn't hit many ceiling balls <laughs> um, because he's so good at cutting off those lobs. He's not forced into it too often. Got a lucky crack there. It's a good lead for Rocky Carson, 7-4. Yeah. I think I'm going to agree with you in the sense that Kane may not be as sharp as what we saw last year. Well, there's no question about that. That's I, pretty. I, didn't, I did not need you to confirm that, Sean. Well, I'm just yeah, looking for something to agree with you on. I see. Well, I appreciate you. Uh, Kane clearly right now, although he's playing very well and it's tough to be too harsh on him, he's down 7-4 in the first game of the U.S. Open semifinal. You know, last year he set such a high standard um, that this year he's just not living up to it just yet. You know, just about anybody you talk to will say that the standard that Kane set last year was the highest level of play that anybody's ever seen. And that's going back to people who saw the top pros from the 70s and every successive generation after that. So putting Kane in his prime, Sudzy Montrick in his prime, Cliff Swain in his prime, Marty Hogan in his prime. Boy, I knew you, I had set myself up that that question was coming, huh? That's, that's a tough that? one. If you were able to beam them on the court for their single best match during their best year, 
not taking into account longevity or all the other factors that probably go into being considered the greatest ever. I would say the way Kane played last year was the highest level of racquetball ever played. Not too many would disagree with you. Most importantly, Sean, would you disagree with me? I don't know that I can. That's, I mean... What we saw last year was breathtaking. I mean, racquetball, I, I, I've never Four, seen it played like nine. that. It was something else. What a shot by Kane. Pretty effortless cross court. Yeah, but, you know, once again, indicative of just how versatile his game is. You know, he doesn't, he can crush the balls. We've seen on a couple of cross courts. There, he took a little pace off it, brought up his height, and just did an incredible angle. Man, Rocky just took a huge swing at that. Six, seven, nine. Kane creeping his way back here, 6-9. That's dangerous for Rocky. Yeah. Well, to give you some bad karma, if Rocky gets this, lets this game slip away, in addition to having a lifetime record against Kane of 1-11, which might get in his head, Kane's record after winning the first game since he started the tour is 109-4. Wow. So I, I don't think we can overstate how important this first game is to Rocky. Sticking with the lob serve. Huge miss. Now Rocky Carson with game point. Let me just tell you this, as far as stats go, Kane has not lost a game in the U.S. Open for two years. Well, if Rocky can score this point, that stat will no longer be valid. And there it is. The two-year run for Kane Wazalinchuk has just ended as far as games go. Rocky Carson takes game one. The men's pro semifinals already off to a great start. We'll be right back. We're back here at the Choice Hotels U.S. Open. This is the men's pro semifinals, Rocky Carson and Kane Wazalinchuk. Kane Wazalinchuk, the number one player in the world, has won this tournament two years in a row, has not lost a single game in two years, and, and now Rocky Carson. And that, that'll make this match very, very interesting to see how Rocky responds, because clearly he doesn't have a lot of experience at coming from behind these last couple of years. So we'll see how he handles losing the first game. I, now I will say this. The, only reason that ball went out is the difference in Rocky's game is so stark, yeah, right? And um, Kane's game looks so drastically different. It almost looks like he's trying to play strategically and he's mixing up his serves almost like a Jack Huzak or a Jason Menino. It's almost like he's trying to reform his game to prove he can win as a control player and he's not playing with anywhere near that rage and that reckless abandon that made him so tough yeah, and I, so intimidating to his opponents. I'm I not agree. sure what he's doing. Yeah, I, don't, I'm, I agree. I don't see the fire that we saw last year. So, I mean, it, it was so clear that his opponents last year were afraid of him. He had them so intimidated with the rage he brought onto the court and the intensity with every point. And here it's almost like he's deliberately not trying to demonstrate that type of outward emotion and intensity and he's mixing up his serves and at the end of that first game he went to a lob with his backhand. Something you'd see a player that doesn't have his firepower resort to. Great serve right there. But when you got Kane's firepower, you don't need to be messing around with lob serves and funny angles with the serve. 
when you hit the ball like Jack Huzak or Jason Nino or some of the other control players, then you need to be very creative. But if you've got the firepower like a Kane Waslanchuk, a Cliff Swain, you should just be bringing that gas every time. That's smart, smart racquetball for Rocky right there. Not so smart from Kane. No, and almost to use a pitching no, analogy in baseball, you know, nobody sets out to be a knuckleball pitcher, but you become a knuckleball pitcher if you don't have the fastball. Kane's got the fastball, and he needs to be leading with the heat. Not a bad analogy there, Aaron Katz. I like it. <laughs> That's just solid commentary. I mean, we can forget about the match here and talk about your commentary. You just... No, that's great stuff. Rocky right back. 0-2, yet to get a point on the board. Finally, actually, gets a point on the board. Yeah. Good shot there by Kane right down the line. Two, serving one. Please remember there's to be no flash photography. I'd like to see Kane just kind of bear down here, go to the drive serve, and really try and capture some of that, that intensity that we've seen in the past. It's a good serve, great ceiling ball by Rocky. A little short. Yeah, and Kane makes him pay for it. That's a great shot, right down the line. As flat as it can get, too. Kane off to a 3-1 lead in game two. Rocky leads the series one game to zero. A little better start for Kane here. Boy, that's pretty. You know, here's the scary thing about Kane he, as he's up here 4-1, and he lost the first game 11-6. Kane is playing, and we've probably talked about it too much, and it's unfair, he's playing about as bad as he can possibly play, and he's still right in this match sure. against the number four player in the world. You know, that cocky comment about him losing a step, but losing a step that these players never had, you know, what? as much as, <laughs> as overconfident as that sounds, it's really, it's uh, not far from the uh, truth. I, really. I think wow. we're seeing it now because clearly he's a step or two behind where he was last year. And, you know, he's up 5-1 in the second game and you know, didn't get blown out the first game. Kane taking his time up there, thinking about what serve he wants to execute against Rocky. He's got a pretty decent lead here, 5-1. Lines up for some heat. Wow. Missed opportunity for Rocky Carson there. He's going to take a timeout and think about that. Good call by Rocky. We're going to take a little break ourselves. When we get back, more U.S. Open racquetball. Welcome back here. Kane Wazalinchuk, the number one player in the world in the white. Number five in the world in the back here. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. That's not a good call. Let's take a look, another look at that and see. Watching? Yeah, that was clearly a good call. Looking at that good looking block in the crowd right there or something? Like, what's going on here? That ball bounced at the encroachment line. That's horrible. <laughs> That's so bad. It's so, it's funny. That's how bad that is. I just got to laugh at it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Kane laughing in the face of the referee. <laughs> oh, looks a little, now he's starting to see some fire. Look at this. Yeah. That's wow. No call. How much did he pay you before the match? Yeah. 
and and Rocky needs to hang in there. He's still obviously very much in this match, being up one game to zero. He really wants to be conscious of not letting Kane get too much momentum, get that confidence back, which makes him so devastating. Good shot. Good mix-up of serve here by Rocky. He had been hit mostly lob serves, came and hit a drive serve. See him spending a lot of time in between points, thinking hard about the serve. He understands how important it is to serve well against Kane and get off to a good start in the rally. High lob to Kane's backhand. I mean, what a smooth stroke. That's an unbelievable Tell shot. Tell him not to swing after the rally. I'm moving up. I still got in the teeth. Not that I care because I'm a hockey player, but still. A reference to his hockey. You know, he, he, he was asking that Rocky not swing after the point, and Kane made a joke. He said, you know, I don't want him swinging after the rally. I still have some teeth. And he says, not that I care since I'm a hockey player. <laughs> You see Rocky still very conscious of controlling the tempo, taking a lot of time, particularly when he's in the service box. And I think that has, to his credit, kept Kane from working his way into the match a little bit. And that ball goes out of the court. Stop. Let's go. Let's do a little better than that. If you give in to the aura right, of, of Kane, then the situation is, is not good for anybody on the court against Kane because Kane will just tear you up if you let him. You know, and he thrives like any great player like Sudsy during his prime and Cliff during his prime. These guys thrive on sensing the weakness in their opponent, that their opponent might be a little intimidated, and I think it brings them to another level of intensity. Rocky lines up to bring some heat. Three, seven, six. You know, the, the great champions, when they sense weakness in their opponent, are, are kind of like sharks to blood. Sure. Good analogy. I mean, you are full of them today. <laughs> Rocky's playing a lot of good racquetball. I mean, he practices quite a bit. He's got a lot of good practice partners down there where he lives. He's got uh, he's got Josh Tucker who's in the top ten. Um, he's got a lot of great players down in Southern California he can practice yeah, with. No, Southern California has always been a, a racquetball mecca. Good seal on ball. Set up off the back wall. Oh, great get. Great get. Unbelievable get. Wow. Nice get, Rocky. Good get. Great Good hustle hockey. by Rocky. Giving each other some props there. Seven, seven, three. That was amazing. Rocky's a tall guy. Stretching out there and getting that ball, that was amazing. Yeah, great gets, and it looks, you know, from a, a fitness standpoint, there may have been some concern how well Rocky's body was holding up after those two tough matches, but I think he's answered any of those concerns. Seven, seven, three. Seven, three. Seven, three. It's been seven, three for a few exchanges here. Yeah, and Kane, he, he needs to get out of this game. If Rocky can work his way back in, somehow win this game, that would really be a tenuous position for Kane to be in. Wow. That's what, we, that's what we're accustomed to seeing, is Kane really punching through that ball up front and re-killing it, as opposed to just trying to tenderly drop it into the corner. You know, there you saw the quick, strong, flat hands of Kane.
Kane breaks the monotony of 7-3. Now just three points away from winning game two. Great angle. Wow. What an angle that was. A little bit of a sloppy rally. Both players left the ball off the back wall, and then Kane just stepped back and hit what's called a C pass because it goes into the side wall and wraps around and dies before the back wall like the letter C. Hence the, name. the reason for the name C pass. Wow, the way it all comes together, it's, it's full circle, is unreal. Great cutoff there by Rocky. I think he caught Kane a little off guard. Kane missed his shot by so much. I think he thought Rocky was going to take it off the back wall, but Rocky very alertly cut it off and pinched it before Kane can come back into play. Rocky lining up. Probably going to go for that same serve. He does. Forcing Kane to the ceiling. Couple setups. Let's take a look at the replay here. Oh yeah. Wow. Woo. Oh yeah, yeah you see what like happened there. Two on one. Here we are, four serving nine. Good cross court. Oh, great reverse pinch. And Sean, the people at home has had a, have heard us use a lot of terminology over the weeks. And a reverse pinch is where a ball is hit into the side wall across the person's body. So there you saw Kane striking the ball with his forehand and hitting it into the right wall and then front wall for a reverse pinch kill. Oh, just missed. That caught the sidewall, made it a little bit more difficult for Rocky to get. Yeah, great hands there by Kane. Ten, serving four. Now Kane with game point. Kane wins this. It'll be one game apiece in the series. Yeah, and Kane's record, career record, when splitting the first two games is 24 and 7. And Rocky's record after splitting the first two games. 22 and 25. Wow. Safety hinder there. Kane hit a jam serve that came back through the center of the court. Rocky held up for safety reasons, and the ref gave him a hinder. Just hold up and take, a, take an avoidable way. Makes sense to me. The match is. This game, game is almost over. Yeah. Kane serving for the game. And short serve. Four serving ten. Four serving ten. Kane hits a short serve at game point. Again, that's not something you ever see out of Kane. I don't know that go that far that you never, ever see a short it's serve. never happened. Never in his history. Set up for Rocky. What? Great shot. You know, and again, last year, even though that was a good serve that Rocky hit, last year Kane was stepping over and re-ripping drive serve at his backhand. This year he looks just a little a step slower, and he step over and flicking him to the no. ceiling. Oh, wow. Fully said it. Almost got that. And Rocky hanging in there. You know, not only is it important to hang in because you can always come back and win a game. There's no time clock in racquetball. But it's very important to change momentum. And if the match goes to a tiebreaker, total points determines who serves first. So every point is critical in a tight match like this. What quick hands, that's just amazing. Boy, and, and Rocky really gave that serve a ride. That was a great drive serve. And 
Kane was able to step over and do what I talked about. We saw so much of last year where he would swing at that ball rather than pop it to the ceiling. Kane with another opportunity to take game two. Ten serve six. Skip ball and Kane takes game two. One game apiece here in this men's pro semifinal of the Choice Hotels U.S. Open. We'll be right back. That's tough. Wow. Yeah, they're so... That may encourage him to go away from that serve. That is a very tough serve to hit against Kane because there's so little margin of error. If you leave it short at all, Kane is going to come pick it off in the air. And if you hit it too high on the sidewall, Kane's going to pick it off on the floor like he did there. So you have to hit it just perfect. Uh, I mean, Kane. Kane, Wazalincha. I mean, that's just vintage stuff that he, he pulls yeah. off. You know, that, and that's the type of shot that really is discouraging when you're playing Kane. You hit an absolutely perfect shot right where you want it, and then he just puts a dagger right in your heart by re-killing it. Zero, serving four. Zero four. Again, Rocky Carson in the box. Let's see if he can put some points on the board here. Yeah, and this match, really, you don't have a great feel for momentum one way or the other, but you're starting to get a sense that, that Kane is, is starting to pull away. And Rocky may have oh. used... You think one. that was two That's, bounces? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Guaranteed. One, something four. You know, again, I don't want to rip on Jason. I'm... I am impressed with how he handles himself and how he makes the calls. But, you know, this is the, the type of game where you're going to miss some calls. Well, first point for Rocky in a while. He had been in that service box many times. Smart. Wow. What a great shot by Rocky. You know, it's most other sports, Sean, and where racquetball is a little unique, is that you only score when you're serving. Right. I think beach volleyball and volleyball have shifted because uh, I do think from a spectator standpoint, having all of these rallies end with nothing resulting on the scoreboard is a little dif more difficult to stay focused. What do you think of that? You know, the, the women's game of racquetball switched for a second into rally scoring, which is what you're talking about. Just for a second? It was a second. It might have even been a split second. Was it? How did it go over for that second? Um, you know, it, it, was a, it was a good run. But I, uh, I don't understand why they went back to this, because I thought that that worked well. But then they, they were also trying to mess around with the ping pong rule. You serve rally scoring and have a set of five and then you have to switch no matter what. You serve for five straight points, regardless of who scores, and then you switch servers, right. like ping pong, with rally scoring. Um, you know, again, I, split second, yeah, and it was gone. I, I wouldn't mind seeing rally scoring tried on the Men's Pro Tour just as an experiment. Yeah, so to answer your question, I, I would think that'd be a, a positive thing because, to your point, I don't see the benefit of great rallies and then no points on the board. You know, if there's an amazing rally, and regardless, if somebody hits a good shot at whether they're serving or not, they should, they should earn a point for it. And there's a perfect example, Sean, as we're talking, Kane hit, slid on his knee, took a full swing, and hit a rollout splat, and he's serving now at 4-2, but no points were changed on the board. Lob served, Rocky's backhand. Look at that. Look Boy. at that. You know what? That, that's a good shot, but that is a real mental lapse by Rocky. He took his eye off of Kane, wow. which is an absolute no-no at this level. 
and let Kane get away with the shot. That was not all that good. Kane smiling after that shot. That's just unbelievable. We're going to take a little break here. 5-2 in game three. Wow, just missed that. Yeah, and Rocky's got to do more with those shots. He had a couple of forehand setups that rally, and he's just got to kill that ball. Can't give Kane two or three chances like that. Great he's effort by Kane. Very uh, fortuitous that he stayed in that rally as long as he did. Bad miss. Yeah, and Ro this has really been a, a dip in the level of play for Rocky. You know, I haven't been watching too much as far as the fundamentals, but going back to the basics of racquetball, it looked to me like Rocky was looking up at the front wall, looking at his shot before he took it, versus watching the ball make contact with the yeah. strings of his racket. Boy, that would be a fundamental error that at this level you wouldn't expect to see. And there was a miss by Kane. You know, you see some of the greatest athletes in the world. I have a picture of Tiger Woods on my bulletin board where the ball is already 100 yards in front of him, and you see that his head is still down on the contact point. You know, it's just a very fundamental concept of hand-eye sports, not only watching the ball, but to keep your balance through the swing, keeping your head down. And there's another skip by Rocky. And, and Rocky, you can tell, has really lost confidence here. I mean, it's a good observation you made, Sean, that. that he is not staying down through the ball confidently right now. There's a great serve, back wall. Good shot. There's a good shot. Rocky throws his hands up with kind of the attitude of it's about time. Yeah, yeah, I don't like Rocky's body language right now at all. You know, he looks like very unenergetic and not confident at all. He's really going to have to get his energy level back, get his confidence back to have any chance at all. You know, you see his head dropping his head. A lot of negative, yeah, a lot of negative body language right now. You know, and he's been through two very tough matches. As difficult as five game matches are physically, over the course of a tournament, they might impact you mentally more. And Rocky may have just hit a wall after working so hard to get to the semis and then working so hard to win that first game. He might not have a lot left to give. That's tough. Great little, shot by Rocky. Little sign of life there for Rocky. I mean, all it takes is a, a little run here to try to get Rocky's confidence back. No. No? No, I agree. Oh, no, yeah. I agree. <laughs> just want to make Not, sure we were on the same page there. Nothing breeds success like success, Sean. <laughs> Great wow. shot. Great shot there for Rocky. Rocky Carson serving to Kane Wazalinchuk. Three serving eight. Just a nice, easy stroke. Yeah, great shot there by Kane, showing that versatility again. You know, we saw earlier where he ripped that backhand cross court so effectively, and there he shows just a nice, delicate, smooth stroke down the line. Again, a lot I, of skips by Rocky. You know, again, I don't want to harp on, on the fundamentals of racquetball, but this is kind of simple, basic stuff. Rocky's standing straight up. He is not looking at the ball. He's looking up at the wall and at the shot before he takes it. It's, uh, it's not the same Rocky we saw in the first game, that's for sure. No, clearly there's been a drop in focus and energy level.
Rocky Carson lines up to drive serve. Bad miss. I mean, am, am I wrong there? Standing straight up, not bending his knees. Yeah, and, and a crazy shot selection. The whole reason he went for that reverse pinch was because he didn't move his feet to get in position, so he had no choice but to rip it across his body into that right corner. That's just so tough. Great serve. Barely inching over the you line. Know, but as, a, as opposed to, you know, Cliff's power serve behind him, his cross-court drive serve, also a lefty, Kane hits his much more focus on accuracy and less power. He doesn't have anywhere near the, the pace that Cliff has on that serve. Kane with game point. And there he has it. Kane takes a 2-1 lead in the series. When we get back, game four. The Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships is brought to you by Choice Hotels International, family of hotel brands with over 5,000 locations in eight different brands worldwide, offering every type of accommodation in every price range. We meet all your travel needs. For reservations, visit us at choicehotels.com today. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. And by Wilson Art Flooring. If it's tough enough for pro racquetball, it's tough enough for your home. Enjoy the beauty and durability of Wilson Art Flooring. Available at fine floor covering centers everywhere. Nikon, the world leader in digital imaging, precision optics, and photo imaging technology. Visit NikonUSA.com for a complete listing of all of our state-of-the-art products. Nikon, at the heart of the image. Also, Nuveen Investments, dedicated to helping you reach your goals in life. Ask your financial advisor today how Nuveen's growing range of equity and fixed income products can help you support your long-term plans. It was almost 50 years ago when Danny Thomas had a dream. A dream of creating a unique research hospital devoted to curing catastrophic diseases in children. More than just a treatment facility, this would be a research center for children from all parts of the world. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital has always played a big part in the sport of racquetball. Every year since the U.S. Open began here in Memphis, the players take time out to go over and visit these children. Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships has donated now over $100,000 to St. Jude's. This helps in advancing the research and treatment for these brave children. Not only is this great for the kids to meet these professional athletes, but it's also a reminder to the players and all of us truly what real strength and courage is all about. We're back. Rocky Carson lines up to start game four. Came with a 2-1 lead in the series. Good serve. Unbelievable get there by Kane. Unbelievable get again. Oh, boy, I'm surprised he yes. didn't cut that ball off. Oh, boy. From the knees. Get there. The best rally of at least this match, possibly the tournament. That was amazing. And only fitting that it ends with a hug of mutual respect for both of these players. That is truly a remarkable rally. And the crowd loves it. Well, you guys are a tough, you guys are a tough crowd if that's what it takes to get that kind of applause. Zero, seven, zero. Sean, I gotta tell you, I must be old fashioned but seeing players hug like that yeah. in the middle of the court, I'd like to see a little more rage, Spin a little the more face. tension. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I think it all went downhill when Magic and Isaiah started hugging before the game. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's not something that, I, you, you and I are both in agreement on that for sure. I'm, I'm not trying to see a tea party and everybody getting along and loving each other. You don't, you don't see, Really, any other players out there? You, you wouldn't see Jack and Cliff hug last week. Is agreeance a word? I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use it. Yeah, but you know, you just don't. You don't no. see other players do that. No, I like the tension that you felt with Cliff and Jack earlier today. 
you know, where you were, you were a little last week, where you're a little more worried whether they'd break out in a brawl than hug each other. <laughs> exactly. Zero serves one. Rocky lines up. Going to hit a drive serve. More than likely to Kane's backhand. Not a bad serve. One, sorry, Just zero. too predictable. When, when Rocky lines up that far over to the left, he's only got two options. He can either hit the drive serve at Kane's backhand or the Z serve to Kane's forehand. And he has to strike the ball in such drastically different spot for those two serves, Kane is always leaning the right way. That's perfect. You know, I really think Rocky needs to develop a three-quarter court drive serve like Kane and Cliff have where you can get down there and mix up a drive to the forehand, drive to the backhand, or Z serve. He serves from very awkward positions on the court where he really limits his options. Like here he goes again. He's so far over to the left. He can't hit that serve behind him. He's either got to hit it in front of him or a Z to Kane's forehand, and neither one has been very effective. And there he goes. Oh, you got to do something. He, he hit it behind him, but it's such an awkward one, angle zero. to hit it behind him that it just set Kane up. He really needs to work if he's going to drive serve on drive serving from a little more traditional spot on the court. One serve zero. Kane sticking with the heat. Oh wow, almost almost a great get by Kane Wazalinchuk. Great shot by Rocky, ran that ball zero right down yep. this glass wall. You know, and Kane's got the ability to just get the ball from, from any part of the court. So he's got all the weapons, he's got the power, He's got the agility, he's got the footwork, and he's got getting ability. That's probably why he's number one, Sean. That's a good shit, yeah. Yeah, see, now, if, if Kane would have made that shot. He would have been screaming for an avoidable. Right. He wanted the avoidable anyway, and I'm not so sure it shouldn't have been an avoidable. Rocky missed his shot terribly when front wall, side wall set up Kane and Kane really couldn't get in position to take his shot. Very tough. Hey Rock, don't hit the ball out there, please. What's that? It's a double swing out for us. He's right behind me. Did I? One seven zero. Still one zero. Dangerous territory here for Rocky. Really very little margin of error if he falls behind three, four points in this game. I think he's in a lot of trouble. Great shot there by Rocky. Kane missed his a little bit and left it up, but still was not an easy shot. Rocky running to the back wall was able to flick a backhand pinch into the left corner. We're going to take a little break here, right at the start of game four. Rocky lines up to serve. Again, definitely a, a drive to the backhand. Good shot there by Rocky, set up. And we saw that two weeks ago when Rocky played Jason. His backhand pinch was just devastating. That was a pretty easy one, and he just flat rolled it out. Rocky gets a point on the board here. One apiece. Good drive serve. Very good. Now, I actually like that position that Rocky hit that drive serve much keeps him, better. Keeps him guessing a little bit more. Yeah, it's a much more traditional position, that three-quarter position drive serve we talked a little bit about before. 
from that position he can still drive it at Kane's backhand, but he can hit the cross court serve to stretch Kane out, and he can come back and hit a hard Z to Kane's backhand. A lot of options from this position. Another good serve. Wow. Now, I don't know why Rocky does not hit this serve more often. He hits that drive serve very well. Let's see if he comes back to that three-quarter drive serve position. No, he's lining up on the left. Yeah, I don't like seeing it. I think he needs to get in there. He, he plays too much like a control player. He's got a lot of power. He needs to get down and drive serve more often. No, you got to let these guys play. That's not that's not a hinder. I disagree 100%. I disagree probably something less than 100%, but I, I think it, they should have let them play. <coughs> There's your position there. Now see if he goes to the right. And that's what happens. Well, I, you know, that's all right. You need to get in there and the risk of hitting the drive serve is that somebody's going to step over and rip it back at you. It, it's kind of like being a boxer. You know, the risk of throwing a punch is that you're going to get hit in the face. You can't stop throwing punches. Good point. But, I mean, it seems like the last few that he has lined up on the left, he's getting that, that angle that Kane's not able to get a racket on it. To uh, Lined up on the left or the right? It's lined up, I mean, it depends on where you're facing, but from where we're at, he's the left side of the court. Hit it, hit a serve to... Oh boy, I don't agree with that, Sean. I think where he had some success and was effective was when he moved over to the right and drove it right down the wall. That was the first one that Kane killed. I think he might be having selective memory. No, I saw one, one serve that worked when he... We're remembering one where he, he hit a, uh, a very good shot from that angle. See? Three, See how he skipped that? <laughs> that is an uncharacteristic skip for Kane. Well, for some reason, Rocky definitely likes it over there. And doesn't want to switch it up. And he's up 3-2, so... And he's number four in the world, so maybe we should defer to his judgment. He's getting what he wants out of it. Yeah, no, he's pulled himself back into this match. He's up 4-2. Let's take a little break here. 3-2 in game four. Kane leads the series two games to one. Four serving two. Rocky Carson lines up for that same serve. Not a good one. He just rolled that down the line. Not a good serve, and Kane really punished him and just ripped it down the line. Kane back in the box here. He's got a 2-1 to one lead in the series. Down 2-4. And hits a short serve. This should be interesting what Rocky does here with his serve. I think he's going with the Aaron Katz three-quarter lineup. That's a good position to serve from. It's worked for 20 years for Cliff Swain. Very close, though. That's a good call. Kane's not going to argue that. Boy, this would be very, very interesting if this won a tiebreaker. I don't know the last time we've seen Kane play a tiebreaker. I know it's been many years at this tournament, and I know the last time he played uh, Jack Huzak in a tiebreaker, he lost it. So it'd be very interesting to see if Rocky can extend this lead a little bit and get into a fifth game. That's the serve, huh? Very effective. And a good, aggressive forehand. Stan corrected there, and it's working. 
6-2 in game four. Now, I don't know why he's going away from that serve. It's just a more aggressive posture, good position. I mean, if it's working, I mean, the old Stick saying, if it. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And here he is going right back to this serve. At least he's drive serving. Hits two beautiful serves to the to the backhand of Kane, and then goes for a, yeah, and, a serve to the wheelhouse of Kane. And, and but here's the problem, you know, it's good to mix up your serves, but you have to mix up your serves from a position where you have multiple options. When he's hitting that serve from the left wall like that, he's either going to hit the drive serve to Kane or the Z serve. You have to telegraph that Z serve so early in your stroke, Kane is able to move over and cut that ball off. You know, when you serve from this three-quarter part, three-quarter three quarter part of the court, Sean, and I know you have made fun of me a little bit, but you, you, take it well. you do have multiple options, which freezes your opponent that split second longer, which is sometimes all you need. Sure. Here, you really got to go over to the backhand or to the Z. No, I agree with you. Again, making the, making the reference. That's not a good call, right? Did you see two on that? It's very close. Very close. No, but I, I agree with you. That, that, does, that does open up some options for you. And now watching it a little bit more, it's just a much more effective serve straight in to Kane's back end. And it, it, it's like it gives Kane a better look, some more time to set his feet. Then you, and when you're by that right wall, if that's going to be your bread and butter serve, which it typically would be, the hard serve to your opponent's back end, you have a way better chance of running it down the wall and getting the ball pinned into the side wall. When you're hitting that wide angle, it's almost certainly going to come out to your opponent's out out into the center of your to your opponent's wheelhouse. Kane taking a lot of time. You can tell he's I think he's aware of the importance of this game. He does not want to let this game get away and wind up in a tiebreaker. What's that? Yeah, terrible shot. Terrible call. Good call. Terrible call. Terrible call. call. No, did not skip. He hit it from a little bit behind him. That's a bad call. And we got Cliff Swain looking at looking at us here. Yeah, he says it skips, so I'll, I will I'll go with Cliff and I'll say it skipped then. Rocky Carson in the box, 6-3. Wow! That is a beautiful shot. Kane, like, like many others on the tour now at this point, ha has the ability to not only dive to retrieve the ball, but put together a nice, nice shot with a flick of the wrist. We're in the middle of game four. Rocky was up 6-2, now it's 6-3. Kane in the service box. Does not want this to go to a five-gamer. Rocky certainly does. And the crowd certainly does. That's a very tough shot. Rocky hanging in there. What is Kane's five game record? Once he gets into a fifth game tiebreaker, knowing that he lost to Jack in Toronto in the last tournament in the five games. Great get. Ooh. Rocky barely missed that. He was right there. Yeah, he guessed right. But I think he was guessing pinch. I don't think he expected him to drive it at him like that. Kane's five game record is 18 and 7. And Rocky's five game record is 23 and 14. So both these players have been very successful throughout their career when the game match goes to the fifth and final game. Rocky put himself in a bad position there, set Kane up, and then had, had no choice but to anticipate, and he guessed wrong. Kane gets another point on the board, 4-6. Goes with a lob serve to Rocky's backhand. There it is. Rocky yeah. has just been hitting 
that lights out. I mean, the whole tournament. Unbelievable. Yeah, and that is not a particularly good serve by Kane. You know, nor is that Kane's strength. His lob serve is okay, but definitely not his bread and butter and what he wants to, you know, live and die by. There that's a great angle, great you know, serve. Again, set up. When you're able to, when he serves from that three-quarter spot, he's got three very viable options. He can drive it down the line to Kane's backhand. He can rip it across to Kane's forehand, or he can come back to the Z serve like that, and he really freezes Kane longer than when he goes over to the left wall and he really telegraphs the serve. Let's see if he'll stick with this position. Good serve again, forces Kane to go up to the ceiling. Great wow. down the line. See, I'm not sure why Rocky doesn't go to this game more often. He's got a lot of power. He can rip his drive serve. His deep court game is very, very strong. I think Rocky can take his game to the next level if he went away from the lobs and some of the junk serves he used and just got down and ripped with the, with the top rippers. There's that cross-court serve. You know, again... Kane when, looking for a hinder there. Yeah, which he's not going to get, but going back to Rocky's serve, which we've talked a lot about, there he hit the third option, the drive cross-court serve to Kane's forehand, and you can tell he had Kane totally stretched out because from that position he had previously hit either a drive to the backhand or a Z to the backhand. So he's sequencing his matches very well, sequencing his serves very well, very similar to how we saw Cliff Swain against Jack Huzak from the same position except the left-handed side mix up those three or four options you have from that position. Rocky's on a nice little run here. Another good serve. Good serves. Draws a weak return. Oh. Wow. Very lucky for Rocky. Smart move for him to take that out of the air, but just missed it and hit a terrible shot, but got fortunate by a lucky bounce back here in the backcourt. Now Rocky, one point away from pushing this to a five-game tiebreaker. And really, I've never seen Rocky go to this serve for a sustained period of time as he has in this fourth game. And it's very, very impressive. He hits that serve very well. Good shot. So Kane four, serving ten. up in the box, serving four to ten. Definitely curious what's going on in the head of Kane Wazalinchuk right now. And he's going to think about it also. We'll right. take a little break. When we get back, exciting racquetball. 10 serving four, Rocky Carson and Kane Wazalinchuk. Welcome back to the Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships. Kane Wazalinchuk serving to Rocky Carson. And the ball goes out. We're That's gonna replay it. that rally. That's a good break for Rocky. Four serving ten. Still four ten. Rocky doing a good job staying focused while Kane is getting engaged with the referee, thinking about a serve, knows he needs to finish off this game and get it into a tiebreaker. Rocky with game point. Going for the crack. Great get. Wow. And an effective ceiling ball. Wow. That's a good shot. The crowd definitely pulling for Rocky right now. Yeah. We have a packed house here.
Lob serve to Rocky's backhand. That's tough. Rocky's backhand is just amazing. And Kane's, Kane's re-kills are, are clearly not up to his normal bar. Normally he would punch that ball down the line, which is a more aggressive play than trying to go cross court like he has. Third opportunity for Rocky to take this to a tiebreaker. Lines up back in that location again. Yeah, once flash again. photography. The right is his. No flash photography. And Four, seven, ten. Jason lets the crowd know about that. That's very distracting to some of these players, especially at that point when you've got game point on the line. There's now, a flash in your face. Now, what is it that makes it different in racquetball? Because there's flash photography in every sport. Yeah, but I'm guessing because. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good question. Rocky with the backhand. That's a makeup call. <laughs> Next time, don't make that makeup call just so blatant. I believe this is Rocky's fourth chance now to win game four. They've been locked at 10-4 for a while now. Yeah, fortunately, Kane has not been able to take advantage of it and has only gotten from four to five. That was a good serve. Great get. Good call. That is a good call. The Choice Hotels U.S. Open Racquetball Championships is brought to you by Choice Hotels International, family of hotel brands with over 5,000 locations in eight different brands worldwide, offering every type of accommodation in every price range. We meet all your travel needs. For reservations, visit us at choicehotels.com today. Choice Hotels, we'll see you there. And by Wilson Art Flooring. If it's tough enough for pro racquetball, it's tough enough for your home. Enjoy the beauty and durability of Wilson Art Flooring, available at fine floor covering centers everywhere. Nikon, the world leader in digital imaging, precision optics, and photo imaging technology. Visit NikonUSA.com for a complete listing of all of our state-of-the-art products. Nikon, at the heart of the image. Also, Nuveen Investments, dedicated to helping you reach your goals in life. Ask your financial advisor today how Nuveen's growing range of equity and fixed income products can help you support your long-term plans. It was almost 50 years ago when Danny Thomas had a dream. A dream of creating a unique research hospital devoted to curing catastrophic diseases in children. More than just a treatment facility, this would be a research center for children from all parts of the world. St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital has always played a big part in the sport of racquetball. Every year since the U.S. Open began here in Memphis, the players take time out to go over and visit these children. The Choice Hotel's U.S. Open Racquetball Championships has donated now over $100,000 to St. Jude's. This helps in advancing the research and treatment for these brave children. Not only is this great for the kids to meet these professional athletes, but it's also a reminder to the players and all of us truly what real strength and courage is all about. Sean, a little earlier in the match we talked about how every point counts because it goes to a fifth game total point serves. Well, it looked like Kane won the serve by two points. Wow. You know, once again, I don't want to overemphasize it, but if, Ken, if Kane gets off to a two, three, four point lead here, all because he scored two more points in the first four games, makes you appreciate that much more how important each point is along the way and why these players, you see them playing so hard even when they're down 10-0. Wow. Great shot there by Rocky. Zero, 
know, that, that mental edge when the, your competitors are just a little bit afraid of you, and all of the great athletes had that during their primes, whether it be McEnroe or Jordan. Clearly, Kane had that, and you can see over the course of this match, it slipped away a little bit as Rocky has worked his way in. Looking for no call. I mean, it was, you know, it was close to a hinder, but he didn't ask for it, so the ref certainly isn't going to give it to him. I think Kane hit the ball a little higher than Rocky was expecting. Rocky was thinking he was going to have to charge forward to cover one of Kane's patented re-kills, and then Kane pushed it up a little bit. So Kane up 1-0 in the five-game tiebreaker here. Great pass. Boy, that is a terrible, terrible a miss. miss. Kane is looking very, very Euros pedestrian at this point. His footwork is not crisp. His confidence does not seem to be there. And, you know, Rocky, once again, starting to get a little bit more of a strut about him as he this match goes on longer and longer. There he is lined up in that position. Goes down the line. Good serve, set up. Oh, great angle. Wow. Great Good reverse stuff. angle there. Once again, from the three-quarter position, hits an effective serve to Kane's backhand, gets a weak return, and then hits a reverse pass to wrong fit Kane. Kane was coming from the right side of the court back to the center. Rocky very effectively hit it back to the right side and wrong footed Kane. 1-1 one, one in game five. Good misdirection pass. We're going to take a little break when we get back. More of this exciting tiebreaker. In order to start the rally, you need to serve. To serve, you have to stand between these two solid red lines, hit the ball against the front wall. The ball needs to travel past this second red line on a fly without touching the back wall on a fly. And here's what it looks like. and now your rally started. Now that you've served the ball, your opponent needs to hit it before it bounces twice. Once he does hit it, it needs to hit the front wall before it hits the floor. If it hits the floor first, it's called a skip, and you've won the rally. No, short serve. Way short. Came really giving Rocky an opportunity. Now you really get the feeling that if Rocky doesn't capitalize on some of these opportunities and doesn't close the gap here, he can be in a lot of trouble because Kane is, once again, not playing at the level we've been, become accustomed to seeing him here at the U.S. Open. Bad oh miss. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, even Lord. worse miss. This is really sloppy racquetball for the fifth game of a major tournament. To see both playing making errors like this is, yeah. is not characteristic. I mean, that was a huge miss by Kane. It was about an eight-foot pinch. Yeah, it was and then, almost. <laughs> I geez. think it may have gotten Rocky a little off balance. He missed it by so much. 5-1. Ooh. That's a great shot. Once again, great footwork there by Kane. Changing directions, stepping back over to the backhand and just ripping it into that right-hand corner. That was a beautiful stroke. Yeah, that was much more similar to what we saw last year. That real aggressive footwork, getting in position, re-killing on just about every opportunity. It's a good Z serve. Yeah, but Rocky's got to cut that off. Oh. Rocky's missing these backhands now. Yeah. Something's going on in his head here. Yeah, and, and, and I thought he played a little, a little too passively on that Z serve. He needs to step over, cut that Z serve off before it gets into the third wall, because once it gets into that third wall, he's put in a very defensive position. Wow. 
Didn't expect that. No, I, I thought it was a poor decision to go up and strike that ball so high. Typically, if you can't get that ball, when you go to cut it off down in your knees or below, you're better off backing off and letting it drop into your hitting zone. He just did an overhead tomahawk kill from about six feet from the front wall, which is a very tough shot. Oh, oh. That was way short, way short, Sean. Have, have your glasses slipped on you? That ball was inside the line. <laughs> I just merely said, ooh. And what did you mean by ooh? I can't believe he hit it short. <laughs> One serving six. It's good get. Wow. Ooh. Great, Great shot. <laughs> Great reverse pinch. Love it. And there's that reverse pinch we've talked a lot about over these One last several six. weeks as we've watched on the tennis channel the great racquetball here at the U.S. Open. A reverse pinch is when a player strikes the ball and hits it across his body into the wall on the other side of his body, and then it hits the front wall after the side wall. Rocky switching it up a little bit, going to a lob. Wow, good idea to switch it up, though. He's been bringing heat for a long time. Yeah, good, good mix-up, good timing on the mix-up. Didn't hit it particularly well, and Kane missed it, but a lot of times if you go to a new serve, the player won't be in a rhythm and you've got a greater chance that they're going to make an error. So now he's going for it again after he got the success we'll out of that. We'll see if Kane adjusts. Yeah, another no, another skip. Now at this point, if you're coaching Rocky, two in a row on the lob, hasn't been successful in the first couple games. Now we're in game five. He's gotten two points out of it. What do you tell him? You know, you got to stick with it. He's missed two in a row. You know he's going to go for a third. My guess is Kane's going to hit it. But after you go, oh, he's mixing it up. You see that? That's why I'm not coaching him, Sean. <laughs> That's a great serve. Great serve. Wow. Boy, what going a back quick to the turnaround. I think a high lob going back to that high lob. Well, what an opportune change of serves for Rocky. He had gone over to that right side, and now he's shifted back to the left and mixing it up between the lob and the drives. It's going two at a time here. Got his ceiling ball set up. Ooh. Oh, wow. Had an opportunity. We saw a couple of weeks ago when he played Jason Menino, he was just absolutely nails with that ceiling ball that came off the back wall. And there, Kane flicked the serve to the ceiling. It came off the back wall, and Rocky ran it down the line much too high, came off the back wall, and Kane was able to hit a very effective forehand. Wow. Rocky gets that backhand back, showing that he hasn't lost it. Just incredible. Yeah, and Kane, Kane missed the serve, and Rocky really made him pay for it. I was, you know, I was a little bit concerned about that. I, I would have liked to see Rocky go back to that lob. He got two successful points out of that, because every point's successful. But, you know, why not go back to the lob? It's higher percentage. You know, he hasn't done with it, done anything with it. So, I mean, take a chance like that, and that's what happens. Boy, he's keen going to a lob. Ah. Wow. That's a confident looking stroke by Kane. Rocky missed his splat, Le <clears throat> left it up, and Kane just stepped over and killed it. Yeah, Rocky put his hand up, but he knew it wasn't a hinder. 
No. A very half-hearted attempt at trying to get the referee to call it. Kane creating that four-point spread again. He was at 6-1 before, and then Rocky closed it to 6-4. Great lob serve there by Kane. Kane in total control right now, taking his time, really wants to close this out. Nine serving four. Very, very tense right now. Kane with the lob. That is unbelievable. Unbelievable shot. Rocky came up, cut off his lob serve. Missed the shot by a mile, brought it right back into the center of the court, jammed Kane. Kane jumped up, hit the ball through his legs, and killed it down the right wall. Just a phenomenal shot. Just spectacular stuff right there. Kane with match point. Great get. Wow. Rocky back in the box, 4-10. Kane with, just had a great run there, put himself in position to win the match. Great serve yeah, again. That's great, Rocky's playing great. Well, I'd love to see Rocky play this style more often. He really has the power to go at it with the big power players mano y mano more than he does. I'd really like to see him deviate a little bit. I think he has a tendency to get too enamored with the lob and junk game. This is a very effective style for him to play. Good Z serve. Not really, Aaron. You know, it came off the back wall. It, it looked like it was going to be. I hate to publicly humiliate me. <laughs> Disagree with you, humiliate, but it just came off the back wall and Kane had a setup there, but very close. A setup for Kane, maybe not a setup for other players on tour. Ooh. Rocky still in it, still alive, and the crowd loves it. Five serving ten. Rocky goes to the lob. Look at this. Back wall set up. That's it. I like Rocky to hit that serve again and again and again until Kane proves that it's not working. Perfect serve. Good angle. Shot. Wow. That was an unbelievable yeah, that shot. Was great stuff. Rocky hit a very awkward Z ball that came off the right wall. Kane, not only with the presence of mind, but the footwork to spin around that ball and hit a forehand Jeez. and then hit a perfect down the line pass to the down the left wall. Phenomenal shot. If Kane closes this match out here, he'll remember that shot as the one that really put him towards the victory. Kane serving for the match. Wow! Just so tense. I mean, unbelievable. Rocky just 
stepped up and smashed that backhand. Yeah, but you don't see Kane miss that shot. No, you're right. That's a sign that Kane's a little bit tight if he missed that shot. That is Kane's bread and butter. The ball hit hard at his backhand in the front court, and he just usually pushes that ball right down the line. Back wall set up. Oh. The crowd very appreciative of these two players' efforts. Unbelievable. Another Did you say ethics? Efforts. Oh. Kane serving for the match again. Going to that lob serve. Let's see if Rocky cuts it off. He does. Great cover and a great angle. I mean, that's just great racquetball. Rocky hit a near perfect splat with his cutoff. You gotta love this. It's like. Not the Sylvester Stallone Rocky, but Rocky Carson, unbelievable. You gotta love this, when the crowd starts chanting Rocky, like it's a fight against Apollo Creed. Rocky serving at 6'10". They wanna see it, beautiful. You gotta get some of this crowd. This is unbelievable. Set up with the forehand. Great return there by Kane to drive Rocky back into the backcourt and force a very difficult forehand. This has got to be about the sixth opportunity for Kane. Unbelievable spirit shown by Rocky here, hanging in here. Unbelievable shot. This is remarkable. The lob to the backhand. Oh, Perfect. good serve. Kane, with nerves of steel, takes a beautiful, beautiful backhand. Great stuff, great stuff. Number seven now with a timeout. And we're back. Another match point. And Rocky, that is incredible. Well, yeah, that's a great shot. But that is an absolutely terrible serve. That's brutal. That Kane hit. Uh, brutal. To call I don't know. a timeout and come back on the court. And do that. And to knock a lob serve off the back wall to Rocky's backhand, it's just uh, unfathomable. Unbelievable really stuff is. here. So much emotion, so much adrenaline. You, you can know, feel it out here. You know, what an opportunity for Rocky to step up and send a message to the pro racquetball world that he needs to be considered in the same league as the Kane Wazelin Chucks, the Jack Kuzaks, the Cliff Swains by beating 
Kane in the fifth game of a U.S. Open semifinal after being down 10-4. Just amazing. Still a long way to go, though, Sean. Oh, yeah, Sean. It's three, a tall order. Three points seems like an eternity at this point, but he's certainly way better off than he was at 10-4 just a few minutes ago. Going to that three-quarter spot that he's been so effective with. Wow! Woo! One more point, and it is all tied up. And it's just unbelievable what we are seeing here. The crowd screaming Rocky. I love it. There it is. set up. Rocky steps up. Got it! Ten, serving ten. Rocky has fought back. I have, ah, I have chills. I have absolute chills. Everybody in the place is just going crazy. Unbelievable. Oh, if you're not a fan of racquetball at this point, you are not human. And a fan of Rocky Carson. Oh. Set up off the back wall. Boy, Kane is really tight. Right back yeah, at he is. He's missing his shots. He is missing, missing his shots. shots that he never misses. Oh, man. He is really tight. My heart is beating right now. Yeah. Is, this is incredible. And Rocky is just so loose and confident right now. What a turn of events this has been. Rocky lines up to serve. No, you didn't want to see that. You know, wouldn't have been a horrible idea to go back to that lob, knowing how tight Kane is. He's not yeah, going to probably no. roll that. You know, hindsight is always 2020, sure. Sean. You got to stick with the, with, with the dance what? with the one that brought you. Right. I mean, he ran all the way on that serve. He had to stick with it. Just missing shots like I've never. Well, now he's going away from like that serve and hitting it. it short. He is doing it. He's going, going away with the lob. lob. Uh oh, that's a setup. Got a lucky bounce back there. It's a good angle, though. A good angle, but once again for Kane not to shoot that ball and play a misdirection pass with a forehand setup from the two-thirds part of the court shows me just how tight Kane is because he should have absolutely tried to bury that ball up front. Oh, my God. Terrible. All every point. Boy, Kane is just so tight. He is not yeah. hitting his shots. Yeah, this, this is crucial right here. Let's see what Kane serves. Good C. Great get by Rocky. Eleven serving ten. Let's see what serve. Kane seems to prefer that hard Z to the backhand. 
Rockies hit some great shots off it, but I suspect we're going to see a hard Z to the backhand. We'll see how Rocky plays it, whether he steps over to cut it off. And for the match. Wow. That was amazing, man. That was amazing. Rocky Carson, Kane Wazalinchuk, one of the great matches at the U.S. Open. It just does not get any better than this. The crowd on their feet, loving it. Thank you so much for watching. I speak for my, uh, myself, Aaron, one of the great matches I've ever seen. Until next time.